Okay, so okay, so having now developed a ge geometrical framework within which to describe reliability, uh, let's consider different ways in which it we can calculate it. Um, the first way that we're going to look at uh, makes direct use of our assumption of a linear performance function in standard normal space, and basically and finds the desi design point directly as the point of closest approach where the limit state function is closest to the origin. Um, this methodology is generally referred to as the first order reliability method. First order because you're assuming that the limit state function is linear um, in standard normal space. Another approach which you can take uh, is to perform a random sampling of a set of values according to the dis distributions of your individual parameters uh, and then for each one of those combinations of values compute the, the compute the performance function and see whether it is larger than or smaller than zero. Uh, what you then do is count up how many of your points uh, correspond to, f to, to uh, states of failure and you compute what fraction that makes up of the total points to, make, to, to get your probability of failure. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if your probabilities of failure are on the order of 10 to the negative 3 or 10 to the negative 4, as one would generally expect it to be for beta values be uh, between uh, 3 and 4, um, the number of points that you need to perform to get a reasonable uh, to get a reasonable estimate on on the probability of failure will be on the order of a million to ten million. So this is particularly problematic if your uh, determination of the performance function for a specific in, uh, for a specific set of random parameters um, requires some numerical computation. Um, so even if one instance of this took a second to compute, if you need a 10 to the 7 of them, it's, you're going to require uh, a couple of months to get to that result. Uh, so this so this can be problematic. So there are a couple of more intelligent ways of going about this than just this crude Monte Carlo um, approach that I just described. In, in, the, in the context of random number generation, there are two particular ones that I'm going to point out here. One is important sampling. Uh, where you recognize that you're wasting a lot of effort in computing things that are f over here quite far away from uh, your region of, of, of failure. So what you do instead is you bias your sampling to be centered more around where you expect failure to occur and then through a mathematical manipulation you, you correct for that um, shift in the distribution to, to come up with your probability of failure. So what I have here is a comparison of uh, reliability determination for, this, uh, for the same problem on the left using crude Monte Carlo and in the middle here using important sampling. And you'll see that I am able to get um, beta, a, a beta value that is comparable in accuracy to my beta value from crude Monte Carlo using a thousand function determinations instead of a million. So done intelligently, this can be incredibly powerful. Another alternative which is um, somewhat more intricate but a lot more powerful once you start dealing with high dimensional problems um, is subset simulation. Where what you effectively do is you have a subset of limit state functions um, defined by higher values of the performance function and you progressively migrate towards your actual performance function using a Markov Monte Carlo algorithm. So again, contrasting to the, the crude Monte Carlo case, I'm able to get a, a comparable beta value with somewhat higher errors um, in on the order of a thousand sample determinations instead of using a million. Uh, so clearly both of these approaches are very useful in reducing the number of sample determinations that you need. And although subset simulation may, may seem somewhat inferior in this particular case, it, it comes into its own when you have, when you're looking at higher dimensional problems. An alternative approach is to use uh, what is generally referred to as meta-model methods. 
and I'm specifically going to look here at um, polynomial chaos expansions. So in essence what you do is you represent the model that takes all your, your computational effort uh, using a surrogate function or a meta model. So in the case of polynomial chaos expansions what you're actually doing is you, you determine the values of your performance function at an intelligently chosen set of points and then fit a finite dimensional representation in terms of very specifically chosen uh, basis functions to that. Um, so for example, analyzing the same reliability problem that we had on the previous slide using 256 very strategically chosen points and then computing the performance function for those points and using those values to uh, parameterize our polynomial chaos expansion we can then perform a Monte Carlo determination using a million points where for each one of those points we compute the value of our meta model and then uh, use that to determine for which of these failure occurs and for which not. Following that approach we then get a reliability result which compares very favor favorably to our earlier crude Monte Carlo determination. Now before we end I just want to make a couple of comments about reliability analysis. The first of these is that you, you, have to, you have to make sure that you understand your limit state function. Uh, very often in some, in some fields of engineering, the limit state function is not so much based on physics as representing an empirical uh, fit to, to an empirical representation of what was found to work in the past. In such cases, very often, that empirical relation is biased towards designs that are conservative. Uh, now, if you use a, an empirical relation like that in your reliability analysis, um, you will I tend to underestimate reliability relative to what would be the case if you used a uh, limit state function that, that, w that was not inherently conservative. The next thing is that, the, that our descriptions of loading and resistance in our structural analyses tend to be uh, inherently simplified uh, and as such introduce their own uh, degree of uncertainty into the problem. And it's important that we account for that contribution to uncertainty as well. Uh, and, 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 we do, and we do so using model factors. Uh, so in general, a, multi a model factor will be some multiplier uh, which accounts for the bias and the uncertainty that a particular model introduces. A couple of other comments. Uh, one is that what we've looked at here is the reliability of a single component in a structure failing in a one particular way. The implicit assumption there is that if it has multiple modes in which it can fail, uh, the other modes are, are far less likely than the one that dominates, and so uh, it does not, it, and so it does not affect the overall probability of failure. If that was not the case, one would have to uh, consider uh, one one would have to consider the overall probability of failure of the component in the context of multiple failure modes. The next thing is that because we were looking at uh, only at looking at components, we have we have not yet touched on the probability of failure of the structural system as a whole. And a good structural design will have a, a level of uh, ductility and redundancy built into it uh, to to prevent the failure of a single component causing the failure of the entire system. Another comment is to make sure that all the parameters that you use in your uh, in a reliability analysis, whether they are uh, treated as stochastic or not, are at their mean values. You don't want to use parameters that are at their characteristic values, as that will give you reliability values that are lower than they should be. Characteristic values in themselves have no role to play in reliability analyses. And the final point is if, if you are using a, a, a software package which includes a probabilistic analysis or a stochastic uh, treatment of the input parameters, uh, it's important that you make sure that you understand what it's doing and that it, that the that, uh, reliability analysis that it claims to be performing conforms to the mathematically correct uh, theory of reliability. Okay, thank you.